Здравствуйте. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm used to, to the large, big microphones. I'm Daria Sivina, and I'm a food critic. I work for the Commerçant Publishing House and Radio Reviewer, and I will be moderating this session, Food in the Big City. I should like to apologize uh, for being so nervous because it took me 40 minutes to get here. Our reality is changing and food in the big city should also change in order to reflect the latest events. Uh, all us and restaurateurs and visitors and analysts, all those who are attached to food, we will have to adjust and to work on the new reality because it's knocking in our door. It is very topical to discuss this topic, how to achieve success in a big city which is called Moscow. I don't want to introduce everybody because you will introduce yourself. Uh, well, I don't want to waste time. Let's start. Good afternoon. I am Sergei Ashin, and I am a representative project chef market. I am Mikhail Goncharov, and I am a general director of the company Terry Mock. I am Anastasia Kalesnikova, and I work for the project Local Food. I am I am Gisak Alexei, and I so co-founder of the restaurant chain Voker. Asian food. I am Borde Bardev Oleg. I represent Starlight Diners. It's a company which includes everyday cuisine, restaurants of everyday cuisine. Uh, well, they are similar to a la Diner, American networks, who opened their first restaurant in Moscow. And then we have a company uh, organization of food. Uh, catering, event catering. Uh, we have a Yule uh, or Heave catering. We provide our services to the business aviation and also we organize uh, nutrition in the business centers. I think that we provide food to 20,000 people daily. I will uh, I will tell you what we'll be discussing today, what the clients will choose. What is the client choice? New formats and trends in restaurants business. This is a very individual topic. Another topical theme, the attractive segments of restaurant business and what is the entry threshold? What are the start-up conditions for being a restaurateur? And another topic is more narrow, but again, it's also very actual. It is services diversification in restaurant business as the way to grow. When I was sent these topics for discussion, I did not understand what it meant, but I can explain now that we are now when the restaurant is working in different trends, combining catering, banquets, services, when they put all the eggs in one basket. So now all our participants uh, are very humble. They did not explain, uh, while well, they did not introduce themselves. I want to give you three or five minutes for each of you so that you can explain what you are doing. If you allow me, I will be, the, I will be first. Chef Market Company. Uh, chef market company, what we are doing, we deliver products, ingredients in accordance with a certain recipe. So we are dealing with delivery. 
it works very simple. A person clicks on the website and chooses the recipe of the food that he wants to cook today. He indicates the number of portions, and we calculate the amount of food. And within three hours, we bring, deliver the products, the food. So it's like a step process, and the person without any cook's knowledge, they can prepare the uh, food. For example, this is the uh, lemon yu dish from Mr. Johannesson, and he will learn from very famous cooks. But this food is very simple to cook at home. So we deliver products, we deliver food products, and people sitting at home, they receive a set of products, they weighed up to the gram. In order to, I just wanted to, to show you a video how we are working. That was an example of the Caesar salad. You will be able to cook excellent food or uh, at home, sitting at home. You just go on the internet, you choose the recipe, and you click on the cl click on the recipe. And within three hours, we will deliver the necessary products and simple recipes. It will take you 20 or 30 minutes to prepare your food. And we bring all the ingredients, all the recipes. We worked out a number of very interesting dishes, which you will, uh, and you will receive a discount of 20% for the first order. But you know, this is an advertising clip. So this is our concept. It's easy to cook. What are the issues that we solve? Uh, a person does not have to look for the recipe. He doesn't have to go to the supermarket. He doesn't have to think how to cook. He doesn't have to have any skills in order to cook this particular dish. And he doesn't have to where to give the leftovers because we bring the exactly the number of product that will be necessary for preparation of this particular dish for one evening. Now we are working as a restaurant. In fact, we are kind of a restaurant. We, we have a kitchen, we buy food, and we have cooks. We prepare uh, this food. We have our delivery service, and it allows us to deliver the products, fresh products, of a higher quality than in a supermarket. Uh, we are not the only one in the world. We have not invented the wheel. The concept is uh, widely used. It's well developed in the world. And three years ago, it started. It was launched. And now in the USA, in Europe, it's a very popular concept. We are the first in Russia, and we are the most powerful. We differ significantly from our Western colleagues and our competitive advantage. Uh, we have a competitive advantage, and we will work on this concept here in Moscow and then St. Petersburg, and then we will move to the West. That's it. Thank you. I represent the company Tirimok. It was set up, it was established in 1998. And now we have 180 restaurants and about 50 street vendors. The, the most famous dish that we sell is the creperie or pancakes. Then we cook traditional Russian soups and the buckwheat, buckwheat with different ingredients. In 15 years, our company has uh, significantly grown, and our turnover is $180 million. Um, we provide food for, we cater 130 million people a year. We are one of the best 
fast food concepts and USA Today last year published a different number of 10 best concepts fast food outside of USA which USA want to have in their countries and we were among them. Tirimok, we have a big factory, a kitchen factory. We have a big fit kitchen factory. Could you tell us about your concept, why it is so exclusive, why it is so unusual, and why it is so attractive? Well, uh, I would say it's quite a usual trend. McDonald's is also a usual trend. And the, the beauty of McDonald's that is that it's a very usual brand. Uh, but McDonald's meant burgers, uh, cheeseburgers. Uh, but Tirimok, Tirimok, our company, it is uh, tasty pancakes out of make, made out of the pastry prepared every night. And every morning we deliver this pastry to the uh, different points. Then we cook uh, soups, and if the soups have not been sold, that we just waste them. The buckwheat, it's our exclusive product, uh, and the latest innovation with buckwheat is the mi meatballs with buckwheat in tomato sauce. It is a very successful product. But the main product is the, the main advantage, uh, technological advantage, is that we were able to teach uh, 2,000 cooks who are masters, who are chefs in preparing the pancakes. And the quality is higher than five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, it was tasty, but now it's even more tasty, and the quality is higher. And we've noticed that foreign people, they like our pancakes. Not only Russians eat them, and we were included in the high ranking, so we are pleased with it, but we didn't spend any efforts to be included. And what is the average bill? The average bill is 250, 260 rubles. Practically, it is... Uh, I would say 10 or 15 rubles higher than in McDonald's, but it's uh, lower than in Burger King. Of course, we want to increase our prices. Our factory is at, at 4,500 4, square meters, and every night we bake uh, ham, we bake uh, chicken breast in order to prepare a borscht. Uh, we prepare we prepare for the restaurant all the ingredients in our special factory and the clients receive like for example clients sitting at home they receive a full package for preparing the cooking the Caesar salad and our factory receives full package for preparing for cooking borscht we have 105 restaurants and uh, street vendors we don't see a big perspective in the street vendors, but we open restaurants. In the last year, we opened many restaurants in the center of Moscow. So we're quite successful. Thank you. Once again, I am Nastya Anastasia. And I, would, I will talk about kindergarten because I prepared a project for, for those who want to, or who are only dreaming to start their business. Uh, for them who do not want to dig in the ground the first five million rubles. And we have different meetings with accountants who have already started their business. Last year, oh, we started a project, we launched a project, a uh, city market, city food market. Everybody could come and work for two days with us and to see how, what does it mean to work with the audience. Then Department of uh, uh, Trade of Moscow, they launched the fairs or markets. Uh, then um, 
all this story is about uh, the fact that in our country, many people, they want to do what they are not doing now. And in order to bring them to their new activities, we invented the so-called local food. And why all these little small people can change the Russian reality? For example, you bake your pies, you buy flour from your friend who has a windmill, you bake 20 pies a week and you give them to your relatives. Then your neighbors come and they ask you to bake more pies for the weekend. And in one year, you have 1,000 orders a day and you buy flour not only from your friend but from all your neighbors and then you take a jam uh, which your mother cooks from uh, your own apples and the all the babushkas who live in the same village they sell you your their apples and they have an additional bonus to their small pensions and then in 10 years uh, well you have a big business everybody eats good food uh, they enjoy your pies and gradually our economy will is blossoming is blooming and the lady is asking about the certificate for the jam well you can take a jam and you ask for a certificate Anastasia tell us for seeing the next question, please tell us what is your consequence, uh, competence? Uh, do you provide consultancy for the future owners of restaurants or to the future cooks for the future, all those people who want to uh, prepare food? Well, famous restaurants do not like me because I don't have any restaurant, but I have friends who work in our controlling steering committees, and they come to us and they tell us how to do everything correctly. The problem is yesterday, for example, I was attending an interview, and it is not possible to receive a truthful information. The Department of Trade does not provide this truthful information and I try to arrange the meetings of the people who can provide this information so it's practical use practical benefit I have two people two persons who work with me good afternoon I am Alexei since 2008 with my partners we launched the project Walker it is noodles uh, and we sell a very primitive, a very simple uh, thing, noodles in a box. We joined this business not from the uh, food business. Before, all my partners were dealing with advertising, and then we saw it in Europe. It was tasty. We liked it. At that time, the market niche was not occupied, and we thought, why not to do it? And we were thinking, thinking about it. We had a starting capital, and 2008, we did it. So since 2008, we are, well, we live and we are developing. And I know all those who were before us. But this trend of pan-Asian food, we are the pioneers of this pan-Asian food. At the, currently, we have 11 points, uh, cell points. And we diversify our business. We have a catering service. We have a delivery service. And when we, we do delivery all throughout Moscow, we are actively developing franchise. We have 11 cell points. And we have 12 other points uh, to be opened in the near future. And in Moscow, we are considering uh, We work with seven regions, and we want to open new cell points in the very near future. We, the, well, since 2010, we were asked to, to provide a franchise, and now we, are, we have prepared the franchise. And in autumn, or this last fall, everything started. 
and in May we will open new cell points. We are negotiating with uh, international brand, with international companies in Ukraine. So we we live and we are developing. It is interesting for us. So we're dealing with the street food, food sold in the streets. I think that we are a younger brother of Michael. What is the average bill? It's a bit higher. It's about 400 rubles because one dish costs 300 rubles. But I think it's one box. It's one box, but it's like a full lunch. And despite anything, uh, this price is competitive with Europe, and we survive. We are trying to increase the price maximum once a year, and our suppliers, they, they do what they want. Alek, will you add anything or... Will you introduce yourself? Will you add anything? I wanted to say that taking into consideration the changes that we observe in the market, there is a kind of a fall, a kind of a decrease in the last quarter of 2013 and in the first quarter of 2014, approximately in our uh, democratic segment, I'm talking about the Starline restaurants, we have like a decrease of, of by 80%, but we have envisaged this fall, this decrease, and we worked out two new pilot projects, which we've launched in August of the last year, and at the end of 2013. Uh, this is a kind of a prototype of a fast food under the brand Starline Burger. It is an um, enterprise with a square of 100 square meters. We are planning to organize a franchise there. And the second project, which we've launched early this year, is a format of a street food, food sold in the street, mobile, mobile food. It is a bus fully equipped with a length of 11 meters. And this bus, oh, when it is stable, when it is stable, but no, 11, a length is 11 meters. It is an autonomous bus. It has a, its own generator for, for with a, it's like a kitchen. It's like a kitchen working on gas. If it is interesting, you can go to Novospasky Dvor and you may see this experimental bus. It is called the Starline Burger Mobile. It is specific and the difference from other burger companies is that we cook a burger only for the client. It is not cooked before. When the client comes within five or seven minutes, it's like a Lego, like a Lego constructor. And how, well, how much is your burger? Between 120 rubles up to uh, 180 rubles, but the average bill, including a drink, is 220 rubles. And the meat is, it's a real meat. It's a natural meat, Russian natural meat, cooked, uh, 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 cooked in accordance with our own recipe. We have our own sauces and so on. So a question is a, tra a transfer to the Russian products. I think we will be able to discuss this question today. But now I think we can move to the questions. And the first question is, uh, what are the gastronomical trends of the national kitchen are more prospective in fast food? I think it is very symbolic that today at our discussion we have people who move forward Russian cuisine and Asian cuisine. I'm not sure about the burgers. 
But I think that these are the key trends which will be in the mainstream and which have to be. And what do you think? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have another uh, vision and you will just name some national cuisine switch, uh, the key ones in the world. Uh, so we had a survey about the uh, in a in a business park. So the and the burger was the most popular product. So it is actually a piece of meat between two pieces of bread. So I don't think that we should neglect a burger. Uh, so maybe uh, Mikhail and Alexei uh, will answer my question. So when the first uh, um, Terry Mook street vendor started operating, I saw a long queue to it, 40 people, uh, and uh, it was really a surprise. So about queries or surveys, so in St. Petersburg, a Finnish company um, performed a query, and in Moscow, I did the same. So the Finnish company gave, well, yielded the data that the pancake should be a small size and should cost only five rubles, and the demand is low. And my query showed that the price should be 25 rubles. They should be large, and the demand is tremendous. So each year of our development shows that there is a huge demand for Russian cuisine. We shouldn't prove anything here. It is absolutely apparent. There's a large number of uh, contemporary young people, when they go overseas, they see, well, excellent ready-made product uh, in uh, pizza cafes and some other cafes. So technologically, everything is ready there. So in Russian cuisine, we don't have such standard procedures. We need to create them. And besides, um, a lion's share of chefs in restaurants are uh, foreigners here, and they don't know Russian cuisine. So technologically, it's much easier to start up. Um, a foreign concept here, but uh, it's, uh, well, in terms of uh, the market and the demand, so the Russian market has very good prospects. So during our first year of our, our existence, when I talk to my uh, acquaintances, they say, oh, wow, well, I also wanted to um, uh, to, uh, to launch uh, the same tub of a cafe, but somehow I didn't do it. So Mikhail, I wanted to ask you, well, when was it? Maybe you remember in mid in the mid 90s when the cafe Yolki Palki was started. I, I really don't remember exactly. So, do you remember that it was a kind of a breakthrough <coughs> in the market when Novikov uh, launched Yolki Palki? Well, um, it used to be a fast food cafe so in a democratic format and Russian cuisine. Uh, well, you have even a more democratic um, cafes, uh, so is that just a kind of a sign of time? Uh, I don't think that Yulki Palke are popular now. Well, when I saw the first McDonald's in the Pushkin Square here in Moscow, I'm absolutely impressed how this huge machine operates um, efficiently and effectively. So, and then I, this idea came to my mind, and only in 10 years I could implement it when I had already some experience in uh, business establishment. So, as regards Yulki Palki, Novikov gave them up, and the project was. Uh, very good. So though it never used to be a very democratic, uh, because uh, because it was a kind of a, uh, evening cafe where uh, you know at dinner time you could came and have a drink of vodka or some special Russian liquor. So that uh, well some. Uh, well, well, it was not an absolutely uh, an absolute example of Russian cuisine. So why I decided to enter the democratic segment of the market B because of the, my capacity. I don't know a democratic restaurant that would uh, enhance to 300 or 500. Uh, um, outlets so in the United States so the uh, company uh, that have uh, 1200 uh, outlets rank 50th 
So in the 19th our market was absolutely empty. I didn't give a thought to a restaurant, but I uh, didn't uh, thought about uh, expensive uh, about expensive cuisine. Uh, our turnover is 180 million dollars per year. So can we do the same uh, if we open up uh, some 10 or 15 restaurants? So I was much more interested in a big business uh, than in a medium one. So. Um, uh, well, you asked me before uh, about the cooks. The chef is my mom. You know, so we started it with her. Uh, she, she's a great housekeeper. She's a brand chef. Uh, yes, and she actually invents all our uh, dishes and uh, like at home. Uh, and uh, then we build our operations in the way not to lose the taste and quality um, and um, in a streamlined process. Visited Japan, the United States visited a lot of factories. We also, I also um, uh, deeply studied a quality system in Japan because it is not just our wish. It should be a system to, to sustain high quality. So, um, Alex, uh, so I, uh, so there was a question about uh, about the most promising trends. Uh, what should we take care of in the nearest future? I think that uh, uh, burger is a Russian national uh, national food stuff here. Um, well, if you look at the number of new cafes open, and uh, then uh, well, it seems as if it is our our national cuisine. But when we opened up in uh, 2008, so the market niche was uh, empty and it was very interesting for us to work in this direction and, and uh, uh, so uh, we decided that we will cook food right on the food court and for everyone to see how it's how it's being made so and this idea was the baseline of our business and uh, uh, in terms of the current situation, the market is saturated, but there are still empty niches. So we have big players, and uh, uh, if uh, we look at Europe, Asia, or the United States, so uh, yes, we can start up any business, and many times, but. Mm, uh, there is a case um, related with Anastasia Kolesnikova. So the so there is, you know, a huge project, uh, Terimok, and uh, there is another project uh, uh, related with crabs. Uh, but they, you know, cook crabs in another way, so it's also a success. So, you know, a hot dog can be closer to a, a that, uh, that are so in, on sale in Berlin or in New York. So you, you can, you know, uh, do, redo something, but in a, with a new approach. So there are no limits to it. But but you should just have a wish and do well. When somebody approaches me with a new idea of an ultra niche of the smallest products, I say, no, you shouldn't do it because our consumer is not ready to eat. Uh, we have a different season um, system um, because we have uh, actually six cold months a year, so our street vendors uh, would be failing. And, um, you know, a few words about Jira, Gira, or Shawarma, as it's called here in Russia. So, um, uh, well, there are very uh, successful projects. For instance, in the Durum Durum um, uh, cafes, they have their own customers and they are very successful. So, I believe in our market and I know that there are still opportunities uh, for development and there are some, you know, single. Um, uh, enterprises, uh, well, just uh, of a unique character. And they're also successful. So are you against a network? No, I'm not, because I, all, I myself am building a network. I'm certainly a, a not anti-globalist, and uh, not uh, I, I'm not an opportunist here. But you can do whatever you like. But if you have a good idea, then uh, uh, start doing it, uh, start implementing it. And uh, um, we are a, a big city, and a lot of people live here. and. 
and among them, certainly you will find admirers of everything, fans of everything. So if your niche is not too narrow, so and if you know how, if you have an idea and you know how to implement it, then do it. Go ahead. So we have 17 million people who live in Moscow, so they're quite enough for everybody. So all products will feel OK in Moscow, if they feel OK all over the world. So over 15 years, uh, people already got used to uh, Japanese food, such as sushi. And we are a big city. We have quite a lot of people. They travel a lot, and they want to have same here in Moscow. And so we need to uh, to in, uh, give this to him, and we should also endeavor to improve the product. And if uh, people work over that, they can sell any food. And uh, uh, looking at uh, street food in New York, I, I can see that everything is replicated, and uh, everything is on sale, and it is actually sold. Uh, but um, well, there is a fashion for any product, magic product. But uh, a burger, for instance, but it, is, it would be the best burger, which won't look like the other burgers in New York. And uh, such product can be created in any category. So it would be great if so. But uh, if uh, we have some uh, uh, risk zones, uh, then. Um, uh, for instance, in Beijing, you can find bats and worms. Uh, I don't think that it will be in demand in Moscow. Well, uh, for instance, apples and caramel, you know, it, they are not really popular here because there are some uh, national specifics in taste. Uh, maybe we shouldn't play too much with them. And, uh, uh, you know, certainly we can represent everything that exists. And, uh, well, it's uh, easy, but uh, uh, niches should be too narrow. The market is open, but we should try your hand at different types of hot dogs, for instance, or different types of crepes, of pancakes, of noodles. Uh, well, noodles are very popular here, but uh, we still understand where we can win. Now, the next topic is what segment of the market is um, or could be. I would like to reword it. Uh, so how about this transformer food? I tasted this food, but not in your cafes, but I think it's the same schema. So it was just interested uh, how it's done. So I, I tried this, and I tried to cook it at home. I, uh, I experimented with risotto. It is uh, uh, complicated. It is complicated stuff, and not uh, there are not so many chefs who can cook good risotto. Uh, it's a very good idea for people who are scared of something. Uh, maybe uh, I would prefer not a very simple set here. Uh, but for uh, teaching, cooking, uh, home food, uh, I think that it's uh, well a very good history, a very good story. I'm sorry. So, uh, well, people who are not afraid of, for instance, over pour wine into the risotto, but you know you should be very, very scrupulous here. So, yeah, but here you can relax and do it step by step, and actually you will produce, um, well, a good result. And I would advise everyone to try it if you have some complexes about uh, their cooking skills. Uh, so you, sh you know that uh, uh, culinary is evolving now. I, I mean the special stores for homemade food. It, they are very popular. Some rochesteries and uh, as in takeaway outlets exist actually in all restaurants and street food. So, do you have any ideas about some 
reliable opportunities in this segment in terms of uh, business and success stories in business. I would agree with Alex here. It's a huge city and uh, uh, the food market and the catering market is one of the largest in the country. We have oil, gas, metal, and not far away from it uh, is a foodstuff market. Well, there is a huge uh, supply and demand on this market. So if you produce a qualitative um, product, you'll find your consumer. And uh, as regards our niche, it's absolutely new formats. And we are somewhere in between the uh, food stores and restaurants. And uh, our client uh, is bo on both sides. It depends on the situation and uh, customer's life uh, and what spirits he is, what he's going to do. So if he just gets used to buy food in the food, st uh, food store, he don't need to go there. We can deliver uh, all food uh, at home, and he will also get some value from us. And if he gets used to go to a restaurant and he gets used to such food, uh, uh, when he comes to us, uh, he will buy food at a lower cost because he will still need to cook it. At the last moment, that's regarding value and uh, in terms of some feelings. Uh, you know, some people can cook, some people cannot do it. And this is the same situation. And any uh, person who would like to cook uh, can uh, get can get this experience from us. And uh, uh, Dario, we, you already mentioned this, but I'm also for competition. And uh, so we were pioneers in uh, the segment in this country, but uh, I'm absolutely happy that uh, more than 20 projects emerge, emerged in Russia uh, last year, which tried to start up the same things, and it's very good. So we discussed the situation with my colleague. He knows another uh, but similar service, a peer service it is in Moscow, and it testifies to the fact that there is a niche, there is demand, and uh, uh, it would be worse if the chef market uh, would be alone in this market. Uh, uh, well, some restaurants, just sheer restaurants, also started to offer this option. Well, uh, a lot of chefs are thinking too of them. Um, they are also try to calculate a possibility to replace a classical takeaway option uh, for another option which you offer. So some time ago, while I was sick, I stayed at home and for, um, uh, for my referees, uh, so I was sent food. I was uh, I was delivered food at home and uh, uh, no you know uh, it is impossible. Um, well, food is not to be transported. It transportation kills food. So and chefs uh, just try to understand how to deliver you know these ingredients uh, instead of uh, ready ready meals and it's not fast food. There are quite a lot of cases like this, and I think they show a lot of promise. Yes, absolutely. And uh, uh, Western experience shows that uh, there, uh, in a very steady life, for instance, in Germany, where people uh, just uh, will have a very steady life for after they work, and after work, they, for instance, uh, uh, go to uh, go shopping and drive home, and they have everything scheduled. Even in this situation, people order food, and uh, such services grow. And in Moscow, such pro, uh, you know such circumstances as heavy traf traffic and unavailability of the needed uh, products certainly are challenging. So I'm aware that an entrepreneur just follows the demand, responds to it, and tries to uh, 
do something with uh, to work with a client um, and uh, to explain uh, a client its problem and help to address it. So um, then it's very good. So when we started our service, we didn't have any peers in the market. Miriam. Well, we had we give the opportunity to choose out of 300 dishes and to receive food within three hours. Nobody in the world do, does the same. And why we've chosen this route? We wanted to understand what the person wants. Sitting in the office, he remembers uh, well, and he thinks what he will be eating for dinner. He doesn't know what he wants at the moment, but he wants that he has nothing at home. He, he knows that he has half a bottle of the red wine at home. It means that he should eat a steak. And Well, I'm just exaggerating, but it is a very spontaneous uh, thinking. He doesn't know what he will be eating tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So we've organized our service. Uh, to improve, in order to improve the quality, the life quality. For example, if a person wants to cook risotto, if he wants to, if he will be given 25 recipes of risotto. So this is the first part of our success. And then how the entrepreneur will earn using this success. Uh, so when the startup is developing, if you think about startup, first of all, I would recommend to you to to lead this idea, to the to lead the idea to the ideal solution for the client, and not to stop. It doesn't work all the time, but we are using this way when we are preparing the product, which becomes ideal sooner or later, and then we will face the problems, the issues, how to organize logistical organization. We will face the issue of competitiveness. Oh, we will have to organize our supply on a different level, but it will happen later. But now we are a small company, but a growing company, and we have to be stable at this particular time. We have to produce the best offer for the client, and we will not stop. And as far as the economic model is concerned, we are talking about products. We are not a fast food company. We are a product, a food company, but we are not a fast food company, the average bill is 200 rubles uh, because people do not buy for only for cooking once. And uh, they buy food as if they go to the supermarket and they buy products and they can cook for five days for the whole family. And uh, uh, people receive a higher quality. That is why please think about your ideas, and your ideas sh should supersede your, the wishes of your client. It should go in front of the expectation of a client. Now we will move, uh, we will move forward to the next question, but uh, I think that this is an absolutely a key aspect when a human being wants to do something and to bring something to the market, <coughs> he will start with what he wants for himself. And this is a, I think it's a very correct approach and a very sympathetic approach. When a person sit, sits at home and he, while well, he's thinking what he will be eating at home, and he knows that he has only a half a bottle of red wine left. And it's very typical for the Russian kitchen when the mother stands next to you and she invents food. Everything comes from a personal mentality, from a personal thinking. And for myself, this transfer uh, of a chef cook, it's a key aspect in our situation. And in the recently, Several examples appeared when chef cooks are courageous and they start their business without any investors, without partners. They open their small but independent restaurants, bars, and uh, pubs. 
I want to discuss this topic, and I think that Nastya Anastasia can tell us a lot how perspective this trend is and how promising this trend is in order people could take a decision. And we're talking about the starting price for the whole project so that a chef cook could decide to take this very courageous step. What does he have to have besides talent and skills? This is one of the brightest tendencies, what we are dreaming for, about what we are dreaming about uh, coming to Europe and to the States. When we go to the Europe and uh, States and we find these fresh rolls in the morning and we think that this person, he picks these fresh rolls and he doesn't want to do anything else. We have a big issue in Moscow. When you live in Prague and you have an apartment on the second floor, you go downstairs and you have 10 square meters and you do something there. But if you you have to, for 10 meters, you have to pay 400, for 400 rubles for, for square meter. But I think this is a very difficult matter and we'll, what will be solved when we will understand that beyond the central center of Moscow, there is life. And if I live in Himki and I have a North Tushina next, next door, I will, well, I will earn less and I will spend less money and I will spend less time in transportation. <coughs> but I believe that we will have bars and cafeterias in different districts. But in order to open a bar in the district, how much money you should have as a starting capital? Everything depends, again, on the rent. But uh, when people create their business plans, they rely on 3 million rubles. And, but the problem is that people want to do a fashionable renovation to buy luxurious furniture. But if you see the rent prices, oh, I would say that this is the amount. And that is why I invented a local food so that people could risk with minimum some amounts of money. And when they will understand how to cook, how to please the customer, and to cook this uh, burger, not for three minutes, but within one minute. But I like this tendency when uh, new restaurateurs open their own new restaurants. And what can change the situation? It is the refusal from investments. For example, I invented what I want to do. I calculated my business plan, and I calculated when my money will be returned. For example, in two years, my five millions will be returned. Then I found a sugar daddy who will give me these five millions, and then I am uh, trying to find a facility. And I think that, OK, I have money for the wages, but when I have my own 100,000 rubles and tomorrow I don't have any money for paying rent, I become very nervous. I attract um, people. I well, and I start to sell the food myself. And people come and they offer their support to me. So when the consciences will change, and we, when, when, will we, when we will understand that we can open bars and coffee shops without investments, it will be a very good tendency. It is in another proof. Of course, it is the individual responsibility, and we can consider it differently. But we individual responsibility, it's what every human being needs. You are responsible for what you are doing. And if you are not responsible for what you are doing, you are out. <coughs> Another question uh, which should be raised today, it is a question about the product. Uh, we understand that involving ourselves, engaging ourselves in the food business, or we have to think of the quality of the product. 
that we want to prepare our food of. We have many issues, many dangers, how the situation will be developing with the foreign products and, of course, with the local products. And do we have any hopes, any chances or perspectives that the Russian products will be of a good quality, I mean the farmer's products or a company who produce food products and they will find their respective uh, place in the market which they deserve to take and what will be the pricing policy because today everybody faces the situation of a, a well, relatively bad quality and the Russian producers, the quote, the prices that should be different if we want to transfer from foreign products to the local products. I don't think that this issue oh, will not be solved very easily because Russian products are not cheap at all. Talking about foreign products, uh, Except for the dollar zone and euro zone, there is a shekel zone, there is a rupee zone. So from the very beginning, you put a big, big cross on the Russian products. Uh, no, we cannot, uh, we cannot just formul formulate this perception. For example, I go to the Moscow restaurants and I can see, I can see the meat. You go to the high cuisine, high level restaurants. I work for Commerçant and I have a special audience and I see the meat. I, I know who works with the Russian beef and who works with the foreign beef and what kind of play, what, uh, who saw the local fish? It is a Lidinaya fish. Well, you can go to the restaurant Far East, Far East, oh, not, but Novikov, one of the famous restaurateurs, he has all the possibilities to receive the best uh, food. But for example, La Marais, a company, La Marais, sells the fish to all Moscow restaurants. And this fish does not come from the Far East. But if we talk about the restaurant business, I think that democratic segment will be developing. And for democratic segment, we do not need any raw materials from abroad. Well, I will be pleased. I will be pleased with it until uh, 1998. Star Line, we, were, we used American raw f f products. We used Tyson chicken wings, blue cheese sauce, which was delivered from the States. It was very a remarkable quality and very tasty. But after 1998 crisis, we had to trans, we had to adjust to the local producers, and we started to cook our sauces. And uh, the fact that we transferred to the Russian rule, we didn't have less clients. Now you are working solely with the Russian products. We have a steakhouse which we've opened two years ago and we use uh, meat which comes from abroad because this is a steakhouse. We didn't plan to open the steakhouse, but we were lucky. We found a good facility, 2,000 square meters in the center of the city, and we split it into different uh, conception concepts. But it was very profitable for us, and we used it. At first, it was pl we planned it like an American steakhouse, and the philosophy of the steakhouse is American, and the meat is so uh, it is Australian meat. And as soon as the Russian vet veterinarian service will approve the import of American meat, we will transfer to American ma meat. But I would say that now we have to develop a democratic segment, and I would not recommend to all those who want to open their restaurants to open a high cuisine restaurants. For example, if you are a chef cook, and if you found a so-called sugar daddy, and you have a name in the restaurant in the cooking business, 
and this uh, sugar daddy convinced you or you convinced him to open, uh, to co-open a restaurant of a democratic cuisine. But for, for me, the democratic cuisine is uh, we have to find kind of businesses with the low pricing. We have to find the leasers who are prepared to give you space using the uh, income based on percentage. And 30 or 40 percentage, percent of all the facilities that we use, we pay only commission from the rent. I understand, but then I reformulate my question. It is clear that for the net chains, where you prepare uh, uh, burgers, you can find Russian raw food, uh, which will satisfy to the final goal. But if we talk about uh, Dmitry Zot and Yaroshenko, I don't know if you, if you know these names or not, who are chef cooks, and they want to open their own restaurant. They want and they are ready to move forward Russian products because they are educated in their profession and they understand that this is a tendency, a real tendency, global tendency, what they should do. I'm trying to look in the eyes of each calf uh, that I want to prepare a steak of. You know, the McDonald's has its own form. I, I don't want to talk about McDonald's. I don't want to talk about McDonald's. Uh, do you go to McDonald's? No, never. Um, uh, well, uh, some small restaurants opened by chefs use local products from farms, and sometimes they usually they find one or two uh, suppliers, small ones, and uh, like you know the company Lavki Lavki. Uh, well, and uh, uh, for instance, those who opened up uh, Burger Brothers, uh, they just uh, you know met uh, with their uh, some people uh, who supply beef to them. But when a business starts growing and when the catering is included into it, then it becomes more and more complicated. Some farmers cannot, for instance, uh, make supplies in a needed volume. For instance, uh, a cafe needs 80 rabbits, but the farmer, um, a farmer uh, can uh, supply only uh, t 20 rabbits, you see, so that certainly the certainly such stories around it. I know the Department of Trade uh, well, is working over the centralization of uh, this, and we, they want to set up a certain hub where all the farmers would bring their food in and uh, distribute it uh, from this hub over retailers and restaurants, uh, so raw materials. About 50% uh, of imported, uh, of uh, we use local stuff, uh, and half uh, of our supplies are imported. So uh, each month, so we monitor the market, and if our good Russian supply emerges on the market, then we contract uh, it, and we uh, test it for a few months uh, for small uh, supplies, and we replace uh, uh, import for uh, local food stuff. So, but you know, sometimes it's very hard to find uh, such products as good cheese in Russia of the quality and a stable supply here in this country. And there are also not uh, not uh, some things uh, apart from foodstuffs. These are beverages, and uh, historically we sell a kvass, an enzyme drink. Uh, it is uh, made in Sergei Passat in an old factory, and a couple of years ago they revamped it, and now they have a very uh, up-to-date equipment. Now we uh, just we sell uh, draft kvass like draft beer, you know, and if you know the secret of Pepsi and Coca-Cola, you know, they uh, give you your 
um, we give you a bonus uh, three years ahead. So it's kind of an advanced profit, uh, an earmarked profit. Uh, profit. Uh, so the bonus is very high. So we insisted on class sales and uh, revenues from these uh, uh, exit uh, Pepsi sales, uh, uh, 1.5 factor of magnitude. And for young and for young um, uh, restaurant uh, keepers, uh, certainly it is possible to find uh, local suppliers. For instance, we know good steak houses. Do you mean uh, be from um, Lipetsk, from Tatarstan? Well, well, thanks God if it's so. I'm dreaming of that, um, but. Uh, uh, for the time being, uh, while well, I receive a very alar well highly alarming signals uh, uh, from uh, restaurateurs, I, I don't think uh, they, uh, quite a lot of them uh, do not rely on uh, on domestic uh, products. Uh, well, let alone beer, and uh, uh, and very soon we'll have non-smoking restaurants and non-drinking restaurants. Well, and everyone will be leading healthy life. And okay, I would like to add that we have Russian and imported products, and but uh, uh, the issue is that we use some uh, pickle sauces, and uh, uh, which are made by our um, recipes, uh, so we are very creative in that. So there is a very simple answer. Very often uh, Russian uh, foodstuffs are very expensive. It's a surprising trend because it's absolutely otherwise in the West. Uh, there is a culture of good foodstuff uh, in a simple supermarket where you can buy very good, very tasty stuff for uh, on a very low budget level. So this is the this is the culture, and here we uh, we have a kind of a deadlock. Um, maybe um, sometimes everything will be well. Everything would. Turn upside down, and uh, so if uh, an offer is competitive, uh, we certainly would not buy beef from Australia, but from local supplies. This is market. Market is market. So suddenly we buy Russian vegetables, Asian noodles. We cook our own uh, recipe, uh, pickled sauces, but uh, we also certainly monitor our suppliers and pick the best ones, but uh, uh, please come to us, uh, make offers, we'll try you. Maybe the market is, hasn't been matured, uh, uh, yes. It, yes, so certainly it's underripe, but uh, uh, it will have to be ripening faster and faster. So especially if we will be refocusing as regarding supplies and demand. Uh, so me and the lack, we all are in the lower, low budget segment of this market. And we do not uh, uh, raise our prices. So we want it to local economics. And we certainly try to sustain quality. And we need to respond to this because we work on a very complex uh, um, net cost system to make at least some money on that. So we are really very interested in that. So come and offer. So we have some 15 minutes. And I think that if you have any questions, we'll take the questions from the floor. Uh, excuse me. One of the panelists would like to speak up. Um, come on. Now about the segment uh, of um, high segment, uh, restaurant segment, and the segment where we work. Uh, so where, is this, uh, where there is an extra margin, uh, where people come to have a better taste and high cuisine, then I am absolutely sure that chefs won't switch over to Russian peers, Russian analogs, because there are no uh, analogs here in Russia to high class Western products. And this certainly will be reflected in the rise of prices. And I don't think then restaurateur would uh, 
restaurateurs would switch to Russian products, I mean, in a higher price segment. Uh, so you mean that there, is, there will be a leap in price? Yes, absolutely. And who then will attend these restaurants? Uh, so who will visit them? There are quite a lot of expensive restaurants in Moscow. It is, a, you know, an exotic city. It's unique. And uh, uh, we have, for instance, La Mare restaurants. And uh, now I know that uh, on average, uh, check, there is 10,000 rubles with wine, with wine, you know, half of it is claret. Uh, certainly, it's abnormal, and they supply their own fish. So they are fish suppliers, you know, all, all over Moscow also, and uh, certainly not on the networks. So what? Uh, will be the prices uh, in a month or two who will go to such restaurants. So we will see the situation in 1998. I remember it very well when the restaurants were absolutely empty. You could see one or two clients with a bottle of vodka in the restaurant. Uh, and so here the panel represents the different fast foods, new formats. I think that the concepts that are represented here can be highly flexible and response to uh, this changes, but yet some uh, recent uh, keep all the higher class, so certainly they will see different situation. Yes, so we believe in this format and we work with it. We won't change prices. We will uh, try to work with our uh, home uh, economics and uh, in-house economics, and we are a priori on the story of fast food market, and uh, we understand what is an average income of the um, Moscow population. We know that. And and uh, it has been surprising for me always that in Moscow op were launched only expensive restaurants. I don't know how to go there. They are absolutely full. I think that, you know, this uh, um, fast money will be over, and uh, then uh, there will be common sense that conquer, and so these people will come to us. So in 2008, um, McDonald's grew its income uh, twice. I'm Nikita. I'm an entrepreneur from Ryazan. I, I uh, work in the corporate uh, catering segment. So I don't know why we didn't uh, touch upon this topic, but it is uh, you know, also food in a modern city and uh, what people eat during their lunch break. Uh, so in Ryazan, uh, we set up an internet uh, delivery system. And uh, so the largest banks in our region are our customers. We don't have competitors here. So why the internet in a bank can uh, order this f uh, food from us and we will deliver it. So we certainly we have a potential to scale up. Uh, so do you think that it is promising? Uh, this, you know, internet, uh, internet trade, internet catering, at least you should try. Uh, especially now, and I think that here is the story when you have low fixed uh, costs and uh, uh, you uh, arrange only one production, so if orders grow, then the production also grows proportionally. Uh, well, as regards large banks, and uh, most of them are in Moscow, and small banks certainly will be, will be shut down soon. And so large banks, uh, you know, have their own system of catering. They built uh, their own business centers or rented uh, modern business centers where catering is absolutely OK. There it has been arranged. It's uh, part of a uh, bank's social responsibility before they are employees. But if you uh, find at least 200, 300 uh, customers uh, uh, here and have two or three contracts, then uh, come to us. Uh, now we have 500 customers per day via the internet, and uh, uh, so these are individual, individual orders of each employee. So we group them, uh, pull them, and uh, I'm ready to discuss it with her. Okay, after 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 the session.
Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. So I'm absolutely happy to be here and uh, uh, listen to us some of this low budget trends and the restaurant segment of the market. And I'm very happy to hear and, uh, and entrepreneurs uh, say that they work from the greenfield, start from the ground. I am head of the Investment Association of Russia. I'm one of the investors. And so when all panelists spoke and they said that we need money and we have a lot of uh, troubles on my hands, so I was absolutely happy for the first time uh, for over the three years. I'm Shishran Irina, head of the Investor Association. So I wish you all success and uh, an investor and a businessman are interested in two things, sustainability of business and the possibility to uh, duplicate it, um, to disseminate it. So uh, Alex uh, already spoke about franchising uh, in the regions and even in Moscow. So when there is a question to Sergey and Mikhail, they were, their stories were very interesting, but they didn't touch upon this. So did you assess your uh, margins and how will you go to regions uh, uh, in terms of logistics? And what should you do with franchising? It's a question to Mikhail. Thank you. Absolutely. So regarding margins, uh, your margin rate is about 35%. And it uh, actually allows a stable existence of the log our logistics centers. So, so we set up one logistics center normally in the region of a region of for a province, and we uh, just a actually exercise all deliveries from there. Normally, we work via an internet store. Well, about uh, scaling up um, and building capacity, we are working on that. We have a plan to expand to the east. Uh, using the franchising schema. We have a partner in a particular region uh, where our franchise already works. Um, so we have a website, marketing, uh, business processes established there already. Uh, what about the West? I think that we'll do it without the partner. We'll do it ourselves because it is a complicated market and it's challenging. And uh, we will. Uh, extend this through our operational points, points where we will organize the logistics of our company. Uh, in the autumn, we will try to start from St. Petersburg. Uh, uh, we will test our models there, and uh, we will uh, so we will try to, you know, to, to sell our franchises there. And um, this is the plan. We don't want to, you know, to be too in intensive here to intensify our operations because the product needs a proper process. The product needs to be fresh and supplies also should be of high quality. So we shouldn't push it too much. And But next year we'll try to scale up. Okay, so um, regarding us, uh, franchising, no, it's not for us um, because uh, we um, look to our quality, quality scrupulously and we have a certain corporate culture and environment and it is impossible to duplicate in a franchises company. Historically, we started from two cities, Moscow and St. Pete. Last year, we opened up in Krasnodar. And this year, by the, uh, late in this year, well, we, I think we will uh, um, start our business in New York uh, in the place of the World Trade Center. A big building, a big high rise was built. There will be a food court. And I think that we will uh, be present in it. Um, I'm Timur, I'm 16, and I'm a young uh, entrepreneur. Now, uh, well, today I'm uh, selling uh, bow ties. I make them myself. And uh, I want to start up a company selling beverages produced from natural products. 
maybe you would shoot to tell on the beverages what they're talking about. I would like to make mojito, mojito uh, uh, that should be frozen in a fridge uh, and uh, bring it to the park and uh, beaches and in other recreation places. Uh, so, Anastasia, how can I, well, I'm 16, can I get a permit for that in the Rospotrep Nanzor and in the Russian, Russian regulatory authority in this area? Um, uh, well, I don't, I, I don't think that you need it at 16. I think that you should become a, uh, to do. So you should uh, first of all reach 18 or start it up this business with your family. I think that uh, your uh, parents would support you. Uh, I can uh, talk to them and help them. At uh, the very early stage, I would uh, recommend to work out a scheme and understand how will you do it in parks and beaches. Uh, just uh, call to the park and ask what uh, necessary, what documents are needed. To call to Ross Patrepnadzor uh, and ask what documents are needed. So you you will understand that you will be need to have an outlet. You won't be allowed to sell this product in a park or on a beach um, without an outlet, without a sales point. No, my um, uh, the guys will have a pack bag. Um, uh, pack bags, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we will do it like this. So go, go to the park, call, call there, and uh, uh, commercial director or sales director will tell you can you do it or not. Well, so you should sell this idea to a beverage producer better because they can uh, have such promo actions and you all make money on that. And as a special marketing project that could be successful, uh, well, uh, some, well, and swell girls will do it uh, instead of you. But I would like to expand this business. What you should start, uh, if it is uh, uh, real or not. So they will talk to each park uh, individually. You will need to get a permit from them. You should talk to each of them. And it is just your wish, but hasn't been supported by um, um, capacity. Now it's a, an idea. It's only 5%. If you smoothly would learn, uh, you'd go ahead, learn a lot. Uh, uh, this uh, idea would be viable or not. You will see. So now it's just an idea uh, for the start. Uh, OK, <laughs> good. Uh, yesterday here, um, one of the entrepreneurs told me that uh, when you are 16, don't uh, do it. Um, uh, after that, you will register your company, and it will be OK. Uh, but if I started right now, would I be caught by the police in, in the park? Uh, um, you know, certainly security could do this, uh, and you will be brought to the sales department, and you will be fined. The same will be done in this city. Certainly, you could be sneaky and say that I'm not selling it. I just ask money, uh, just uh, just to give money what uh, they can give uh, for these beverages. Well, well, do experiment, to learn lessons. Uh, uh, you are not 18 until and you cannot um, take loans. Well, go to your parents, to your family, maybe they will help you. And you will see. Well, the key resource is the absence of fear at 16. So Alex, in one of his interviews, gave a very good piece of an advice to fresh entrepreneurs, uh, which contradicts with Anastasia's recommendations. He says you, uh, you shouldn't uh, spend your money on your first restaurant. Yes, and I support this again and again. So with smart people tell me they never spend your own money on your first restaurants because it never it would it won't it is never enough. So we we'll, wouldn't be able to do it with our own money. Never, only loans. But the main point is not to be afraid. So how to get a permit and so on. The approach is wrong. You should first. Test an idea. Do this for during a month, maybe half legally, but you will get some experience, and you will uh, well gain a kind of a base. Well, 
At 16, it's okay. I can't be kind of a scout. It is possible at 16. Certainly, you should be reasonable. You should have a common sense. If uh, he is an entrepreneur, then he should understand uh, what can happen. Uh, I have a suspicion that uh, Nasty's uh, young entrepreneurs who sell food and who duplicate in European experience, they, uh, they sell more healthy food and it can can be poisoned by it. So, well, the, the problem is in, motiv in motivation. How can we do, uh, how can we work with the employees? You come to my fair, to my market, and sell your, uh, you know, dumplings or your cakes. Well, you sell our uh, just um, uh, spoiled product. Never. You'll faint first and you do this. So certainly in business, there are trends, uh, there are prospects. Uh, so you need to know where is an opportunity for you. But you, first of all, should decide what you like most of all in your life or what you're eager to do. But, or you just, uh, well, it's OK. I'll do it. But, but uh, just do. maybe you should better take up the molecular cuisine, not hot dogs. Just you should understand what you eager to do. So where is your wish and your enjoyment? I think these are well excellent words, and uh, we can wrap up. I'm Olga. And this last question. I represent some other region, and uh, uh, we have a lot of. Uh, concerns about our personnel. I cannot, we cannot fight highly qualified cooks. Maybe it is easier in Moscow. No, I don't think so. I think it is even more challenging here in Moscow. Maybe you have here corporate schools. How do it's organized here? Are there special schools for that? Well, there are the same people actually. They rotate from one, from one restaurant to another. Can I answer about the personnel? OK, give me the mic. Well, I looked at uh, how it's done in McDonald's, and uh, I also encountered such issues in my own company, Terry Mock. The first idea was that the selection is inadequate. Well, because in McDonald's, these people worked well. Well, there was an idea that we just select uh, the personnel uh, somehow in the wrong way. Well, the, the management works is much better in McDonald's. But after that, I don't know how, but I arrived in at an idea that uh, the issue is not here. It's in how you teach people uh, how in Russia, um, and maybe Alex uh, will speak about um, about his personal experience. Uh, there are people who excellently work in uh, my network uh, in a month, maybe when get into a worse company, they will turn in other people who would, for instance, not observe any sanitary rules and regulations. So it depends on how you teach them. But uh, there, are, uh, there is some 5 or 10 percentage of those who can cannot learn at all. But, you know, teaching is uh, just um, a great thing. So t we have curriculum, academic programs in schools and universities. And uh, <clears throat> teaching and education is always uh, kind of an iteration, a repetition and uh, until you get a skill. And so some 10 years ago, I was at a restaurant forum. Uh, well, people stood up and complained that nobody wants to work well, that there are a lot of thefts. And a French chef stood up and said, oh, we have the same in France. But above that, uh, well, I have 10 people in the restaurant. One of uh, my uh, employees is an alcoholic, and I let him go home, but I cannot uh, fire him because if uh, there are more than eight people in the company, this is a, a trade union, and a trade union uh, doesn't allow uh, me firing him. And so uh, when he's drunk, I say, go home, and that's it. I cannot do anything about that. So don't think that uh, there are you people just think about the number. Mm, think of advertising if there are not enough 
Maybe you have the low salary in the market, so you certainly won't have them. But if you have very good working conditions and you have quite a lot of people, you need to teach them. Uh, you need to, to have uh, uh, mentors, uh, tutors, coaches. So we have a woman who uh, worked for five years, uh, who has craps, uh, and now he teaches our personnel. Certainly he is a gifted person. And he, she can teach. And my mom, who is our uh, chef, also have a um, um, pedagogical background because, you know, to be a teacher is not a piece of cake. And uh, you cannot have uh, ready made waitress, waiters, waitresses, ready made barmen or chefs. I would like to comment uh, as an official, as representative of authorities, uh, about the permits. Uh, uh, so, what are you talking about? about uh, to start up uh, or um, just a business uh, in uh, this segment. You just need to uh, send the notice that you open up such business in Moscow or anywhere in Russia. You don't need any permit. Uh, there is a special format for this notification, for this notice, and great sanitary rules. and stick to them. After that, certainly we all have inspectors and auditors, but no special permits are needed now about uh, fines and penalties. Well, any uh, unauthorized uh, uh, wintering in Moscow will cost you 5,000 rubles, and you could be fined every day, and you won't feel okay. I will feel rather bad about that, but uh, I agree that you should go to parks, to, for instance, in Sokolniki Park. Um, you can do everything there, but um, you should discuss this with the Sokolniki authorities. But please don't get in stories uh, with police. Moscow tries to build have high quality recreational space. What are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean. Well, your last remark. I didn't get you right. About this, you know, games with police, what do you mean? You know, here in this, uh, in, in this city, we can see unauthorized people who try to sell something in the streets of the city. This is absolutely wrong. Uh, any activity in Moscow is to be organized in a proper way. We catch this, uh, fish them out. So we should first of all agree to the Department of Culture or some other establishments uh, and go ahead. So we're open. We can talk. No questions anymore, so we don't play with police. Uh, we believe in ourselves, believe in our luck, and uh, as an issue of an individual responsibility, what you do in this life. And I think it should be the key point in your life. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.